each software application running on a computer spawns processes. And I've showcased this. If you look at Chrome, I'm running Chrome now, there we go, I have two instances of Chrome, well, maybe one actually, because this is pinned here. So I have, I have Chrome open, but if I, say, uh, if I say I want to check the processes associated with Chrome, right? If I just grab with Chrome, I hope this works here, but I think it should be able to work. If I check Chrome, I only have, like, is, there's one instance of Chrome working. I mean, you know how you have applications where you can, you can have multiple instances. If I want, I can open another instance of LibreOffice um, Impress, right? It will appear here. But with Chrome, it's just one, and then you open multiple tabs, although you can open another instance, right? But if I say enter, you see all of these processes. And the reason I know these are processes, I, I can, um, this is a few times I get to show off my skills that I've acquired over time. By the way, the, the, the only reason I do this is because I've been doing this for many, many years. You will be like this as well in case you're, oh, this looks, it's not hard, I assure you, it's not. It's just a matter of time. I've been doing this since 2000 and, I, I got into the computer, since 2004. That's a long time, right? Yes, yeah, so I've been doing this since I was, I started uh, I, my computing course in 2004, that's when I was in second year, right? Yeah, 2004 it was. So it's, it's a long time, and some of these things I was doing on a daily basis when I was working for certain weird environments out there or something. But anyway, so we can write a script, right? We can write a script, and I'll just uh, see if I can, uh, if I can, I can just get the process ID to see which processes, right? I guess I can do that here. To see which processes um, are associated with Chrome. Um, and I guess I should say, uh, I think it's a space, is it? What's between, oh, it's the second one. So this shows you the first field is just showing me the user that has opened that application. Because on an operating system like this, you can have multiple users logged on at the same time. That's the, one of the reasons why people use Linux is you want to install it on a server or something. So if we were to run this on, if I was running Linux, running Windows, would see different users logged on. But if I see the second field here, if I try and print the second field, how about the th third field? I'm looking for the process ID, right? This is weird, how about the fourth field? Why isn't this coming yet? How about the, wh why is it? I'm wondering what this is, is this a tab or something? That's weird. Ah. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. So all of these, when I grab for Chrome, all of these different processes, all of these, right? How many are there? There are 57 processes. Because you have to think here, in my Chrome, what am I doing in my Chrome? I have multiple tabs, right? This is how you use Chrome, is it? If I open up Chrome here, look at this. I have all of these tabs. Ideally, so every time I open a tab, there's probably a separate process or something. But there's other background things that are running, right? Yeah, so you would want to analyze processes associated with an application. Right? You would also want to analyze resources. This is a big one here. This, at, at the bare minimum, this is what you're doing, right? You're administering a server computer system, and it's slowing down. And no. The solution when a server is slowing down is, is you don't shut it down like you do your phone, say I'm going to reboot, right? You don't have the luxury of doing that. Why? In all likelihood, it's running very sensitive applications. It could be a banking application. So what do you do? You analyze the different applications that are running. You would use utility software tools like, well, I like using free because I know when my computer slows down, I have to worry about memory, right? So I'll check. Out of the total memory that I have, how much is used, how much is free? Right? I can then start analyzing memory consumption for the different types of you know, applications that I'm running or something. And well, this is where I guess your skill comes in because if I am to order these by, if you see the thing that says percentage mem here, right? this is randomly ordered, but you can see here that this is a percentage, right? The percentage of the memory being used and also a percentage of the CPU. Look at that. There's something that's using up 80% of my CPU. See that? I wonder what this is, this is 80% here. So this is a process 8449. What I can do is I can say, uh, I want to grab, I want to see what, what 
8449 is? Huh, OBS. The thing that's recording my screen, right? It's taking up a lot of my CPU. You see, well, I don't know if you can see here. Uh, you see this? OBS FFmpeg thing, yeah? You understand this? So I'm analyzing, right? It's just typical examples of analyzing resources. And really, when it's looking at resources here, I know people usually have a misconception about resources of the RAM and you know, uh, processing power and all those things, but there's more. Storage, right? I, I think this is what most of you guys do. You, all, you only get to, to analyze your computer when you want to reclaim space. You're running out of space, right? Because you can't save anything. That's the only thing you do, but there's more here, yeah? 